got to, to write it, that was the face where the V velocity component is computed. That is at the southern face of here. I just did not write the S. Just please add that in the table. So now we continue and we shall assume that the density is a constant. And the velocity components in the x direction, the u, that we have learned are denoted now in this way, they are determined, and I am now referring to the notation that we have introduced here just now and before, and that is also used in skeleton. Then at i equal to 3 to npi minus 1 and capital J from 2 to npj minus 1. These velocity components are determined by the x-momentum equation, as we shall see. So, that is what we shall see later on. And for the velocity component in the y-direction, that is v, then the notation is capital I, lowercase j, and that is for capital I from 2 to npi minus 1, and for lowercase j from 3 to npj minus 1. So I'm using now upper and lowercase, but it's like in MATLAB here, Regarding these NPI or NPJs, they are uh, they are the same. And these velocity components in the y direction, they are determined by the y momentum equations. And that is also what we shall see later. The boundary conditions determine the following velocity components <laughs> and that is um, at uh, u i j that is for um, i equal to 2 NPI, and that is for the lower boundary, for bottom boundary, and for upper boundary, top boundary, which is J and NPJ. And then, likewise, the velocity components IJ. They are from 2 and for i equal to npi, that would be the left and the right boundary. We do not always, uh, well, they are not always uh, dirigible to say that, but there we need the boundary conditions. That is what I want to say. And that is here from j from 2 to npj uh, minus 1. The velocity components in the y direction, v, i, and lowercase j, are determined at i equal to 1, that is the left boundary, and i equal to npi, that is the right boundary, and the j is from 2 to npj. And finally, the velocity component in the <coughs> y direction, the ij, determined at uh, capital I equal to 2, that is the, uh, the left, let's see, 
from 2 to n t i minus 1. And uh, let's see. So, so that is the end is coming. That is for j equal to 2. That is the lower boundary bottom. And j equal to npj. That is the other. <coughs> so there we need the boundary conditions. Is that in Russian the second line? Is that I equal 1? No, um, because uh, the um, the uh, we have the i lowercase a i is to the southern, or to the in that case to the to the western boundary. So we have the the node. This is the node i to uh, j, and then that is the cap for the p, and then this gets two. So this is the, the lower case, this is the U to J, so it's correct. So you have to take then this, uh, it's a special notation here, but um, you just uh, go through the notation that we have introduced. Yes? I think on the third line, you have written first the part of the case I and then lower case I. Uh, sorry, there it should be capital I. Thank you. That is that was a typo. Correct. That was a typo. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now I hope it is okay. So then we have uh, the energy equation. Is solved. the temperature and that is now for the same location where we have the pressure capital I capital J and that is then for I equal to 1 to NPI and for J equal to 1 to NPJ and here we have the, then the boundary conditions at capital I equal 1, uh, NPI, J equal 1, J equal NPJ, and so on. And that is as we did in chapter 13. So, that, so therefore we have done that before. And the species continuity equations and any other scalar equations, as I mentioned, for example, for the turbulent kinetic energy, when we discuss Reynolds average turbulence modeling, they are also solved similarly. So species, continuity equations, are solved to determine mass fractions. Side or you can whatever you like. And that is done similar as we do for temperature. Okay, so then we have that clear. And uh, now um, let's see, before we come into the get into the details of the discretization of the momentum equations and also see how the pressure is determined by using the continuity equations. I would like to give you an overview of what we shall do now later on. So that is the class of methods that we shall study. That is the class of methods that is in all the basic CFD tools for incompressible flow. And 
that class of method is called pressure correction method. Overview over pressure, pressure correction method. That is the method to solve the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations with other equations like energy equation or species continuity equation and so on. So, it works like that. So first we guess a pressure field. We denote that by P star. Then we solve the momentum equations. To obtain <coughs> preliminary pressure, velocity vectors, velocity components U star and P star. So the, the star, they are always preliminary values. Here is some guess that might be some uh, clever one or that you know something about physics or if you don't know, then take zero or whatever you, you think is reasonable. That we shall discuss shortly. And then we shall solve something that is called the pressure correction equation. And we shall do that for the pressure change, we call that P prime. And the condition for that will be to satisfy um, the continuity equation. Let's see. Solve the pressure correction equation to satisfy the continuity equation um, using approximations. where the velocity corrections, so that is called U prime, depend on the pressure correction. And the velocity correction for the Y momentum equation, for the Y, uh, for the y component of the velocity V prime, depends on the pressure correction P prime. So we do some assumption on that, such that we get an equation for the pressure correction P prime. And the goal is that in the end we satisfy the continuity equation. So that is our criteria. When we have done that, we correct the pressure with this uh, pressure correction P prime. And we do that by taking the, the prelim preliminary pressure. That in the beginning it is the one that we have guessed. Later on it is the most current pressure that we have available because we do an iteration. And then, because these approximations are just approximations, not exact, we do not correct fully with a P prime, but only uh, partly. And that is something that we have already seen that is called under relaxation. So we use here an alpha P that is smaller than one. So then we get an updated pressure, corrected pressure, and then we correct the velocity. So correct velocity. But for the velocity, we might do some under relaxation when we solve for the U star and B star. But at this point, we do not. Because when we have these assumptions, we have assumed that U is equal to the preliminary velocity plus the velocity correction and that V is equal to the preliminary velocity in y direction plus the correction in y direction. So that is, then we correct that. And if we have, and we usually do have when we have uh, heat transfer problems, we have to solve then also scalar equation like the energy equation, species continuity or turbulence, kinetic energy, whatever. So then they are solved at that point. So solve transport equations. Uh, like the energy equation for T 
T or species continuity for the Y L and so on. So they are using then the current velocity. And then we set the preliminary pressure, P star, we overwrite that, we do a computer assignment, set that to P, and then we go to number two until the convergence. So then we have here the, the recipe. So we go through this loop and the convergence, we shall use it usually the to see how well the let's see uh, how well the continuity equation is uh, fulfilled. Okay, so we'll come back to that later. But this shows that we have now an iterative process where we solve each of the equations one after the other. That is called a segregated. We do not solve all coupled, but one equation after the other. So now we shall look at the elements of uh, this. And we shall first look at solving the momentum equation. So that is now the finite volume method for the momentum equation. And we start with the x-momentum equation. dealing with that is a staggered grid and we shall now highlight the staggered grid for the um, let's see for the for computing the u velocity so then we have this yellow grid now This is the grid that has been shifted delta x half from the original grid for the pressure. And the pressure now is located here, and that is then our capital IJ, and it is located here at I minus 1J. I minus 1J. So there we have the pressure located. And we shall concentrate now on the control volume to compute that. Then we have here the, the eastern phase, we have the western phase, the northern and the southern phases. So now we compute and we solve the uh, x momentum equation to get the velocity in this cell here. And the v velocity that we also need. That is, let's see, we have this here, so the V velocity will be in the corners, so that will be the I lowercase j, here we will have the I plus 1 lowercase j, and so here in that corner we have the I minus 1 j, 
and in this corner we have the i minus 1, the j plus 1. So then we have our, uh, let's see, here I think this, I have to, sorry, here I have to correct something. Here this was wrong, because this must be the same i, but the j must be, must be erased. So here please correct here, that should be the same i. You see you have the pressure here, velocity v direction, so the i is the same. But compared to this j, we have here the j plus 1. So this is now the, the j plus 1 here. Now I hope it's okay. If not, please, uh, please tell me. So now we can then look at the x momentum equation. So, we solve the x-momentum equation to determine the velocity component u, lowercase i, capital J, that is in the center of the <coughs> staggered grid for u that we have over there. And so we solve then the momentum equation for that component. Then we have here the rho u. Now it is not the vector, but the x component of the velocity vector u. We have the normal velocity component u dot n, surface integral, and assuming that we have a constant viscosity coefficient, we can simply write this as the mu times the velocity, viscosity coefficient times the gradient of the velocity component in x direction. And that is then a vector. If we take the inner product with the outer unit normal vector n surface integral. And then we have the pressure force, so that is the viscous force. Pressure force then is minus integral over the surface. And now we look at the x component. So we take the x component of the normal velocity, the normal um, unit vector n, normal to the boundary of the control volume. That's the surface integral. And then we have the x component of the volume force. That is rho, the x component of the acceleration. That's the volume integral. So that is then the equation that we solve. And the first thing is that we want to treat the nonlinearities in the convection term. So that is the first thing we do. So we approximate the, the convective mass flux. Is the, that is the first convective mass flux. So this is the mass flow or the mass flow rate at the phase sets. So then, and then we introduce now our notation, and that will now in, com, include the area, as we had already done previously for the convection diffusion equation. So, at the eastern phase, let us look here. Where are we? So, we are here. So, there we need uh, to have the u, the rho u. 
The rho is constant, that is not a problem, but the u is not. So, and to get that here, we take the average in i plus 1j and ij to get it here. So that, that makes sense here. So, sorry, that is not plus, but it is equal, fe is equal to 1 half. And then we have here the rho u at ij, that is where we want to compute our u and the row u i plus 1j. And that is multiplied by the area. In a similar way, we do that at the western phase. At the northern phase, we need to have the v. The convective flux here is related to v. So we need to have the v at the northern phase. What can we do? We can take simply the average of the values that we have. So these are the values that we have. We can take then simply the average of those. So then we have here one half, and that is then the row V. I minus one, J plus one, plus the row V, and that is at I, J plus 1, times the area at the northern phase. And similar for the southern phase. So then we have the, the convective mass fluxes at the boundaries of our control volume to determine the velocity in I, J. So that is the city, so FW and FS, they are determined similarly. And the u and z that are entering here, they are computed at the current iteration level. We are in the, in the pressure correction equation, we are at some, at some iteration level. In the beginning we have some initial guess, but later on the current values, so they are taken at these current values. So u and z in this, in this equation, the equation is 5 are evaluated at the current velocity iteration level. So that is then the starting guess in the beginning, otherwise, as it says, the current iteration level. And the pressure in equation 4, um, that is here, that is also evaluated at the current pressure iteration level. So the pressure in equation 4, that we shall see in a minute, is evaluated at the current pressure duration level. And that will be noted by P star. Okay, so then we have that. And now regarding the, we have already here the collective mass flux that we need for this position of the convection, now we need the, the, what we call the diffusion conductances for discretizing the diffusion. So the diffusion conductance, and that is also containing the area, is defined by, let's see, phase that is similar as we discussed before. Now our uh, diffusion coefficient is simply the viscosity coefficient mu and we have the distance now from east to uh, 
p that is i plus 1 minus i. So right here we can directly write the indices i plus 1 minus xi and that is the area at the distal phase. And likewise we can then do the approximation at the northern phase by taking the viscosity coefficient and now we have to look where are we here that is then the y so we have then the y components that is the y components actually the same where we have also the pressure so that is the y at capital J plus 1 minus y capital J times the area at the north so then we have, uh, we have these uh, equations here to determine the diffusion conductance. And similarly, uh, we have it at the south and the, the west. So, now we do the discretization of this x-momentum equation into the form by the finite body method in the same way as we have done it for a convection diffusion equation in the previous chapter. method for this equation 4 becomes so now that is then equation 7 so we keep it so that we can see what we are doing so this has to be discretized now for our control volume so then we have to determine the convective um, mass flux at the eastern phase and that is then Fe and to get then the um, let's see the momentum flux there then we have to evaluate the UE at that point at that phase UE star so that is the momentum flux now over the eastern phase similarly we can determine the momentum flux over the western phase by the convective mass flux times the velocity at the western phase. We are determining the preliminary ones, therefore they get all this star. In the same way, we have uh, the convective mass flux over the northern phase, to get the momentum flux, then uh, that is now for the U. So that has to be multiplied then by UN. And likewise at the southern, we have then the U south. You see, we are taking this here. We have, in the first place, we had, uh, we had rho UN, dA, that is taken care of by the F, by the convective mass axis. And then we have each time, at each phase, we have them to evaluate the, the U. Eastern, western, northern, southern. <coughs> and the Fs we have determined from the previous, uh, from the current velocity iteration by the averaging that we just did before. So that are, that is taken care of of the convection what we have here. Now the diffusion is just the same as we had before. We can write that with the diffusion conductance at the eastern phase times the velocity at the eastern node minus the velocity at the center node minus the diffusive flux of the western phase, that is up star minus u w star, and the contributions of the northern phase of diffusion 
is the un star minus the up star minus the d south, the up star minus the u south. And then we have the diffusive flux. And now, yes? The UN and US, what is that? Why are you writing that to the UN I could write the indices, but it's shorter to do this notation. We are using this P, North, South, West, East. Now I'm, I'm at like why I'm using U and not the U. We have the velocity, uh, we have to determine the convective, the, the momentum flux over the northern and the southern faces. And they are determined by the integral over rho u times the normal velocity component. The normal velocity component is v, but this is u. So it is u that we have to consider here. We have the, that is the convective uh, that is the momentum flux. The mass flux is with V. That is, that is taken care of by that. But it has to be V. Okay, so then back to that. We have now taken care of that. Now we take care of the pressure force. And the pressure force, we look at what we have here. First, we have here just to consider the X component of N. The x component of the normal in this direction is just one. So then we have to consider the pressure force here. And that is then simply now we use the indices here. That is then the pressure that we have at that location. That is the pressure. And it is the current pressure. And it is at ij times the area at the eastern face. So then we have taken the pressure force into account here. And the pressure force here, the normal is in the negative x direction, so we get a minus 1, minus minus is plus, and we have to evaluate the pressure here. So that gives us then the plus the pressure, and that is then at i minus 1 j, preliminary pressure, times the area at the western face. Northern and southern faces, they have normal, velocity, normal uh, unit vectors in the y direction. The x component is zero. So we get no contributions of the pressure force from north and south. Again, why? Because the x component of the normal vector at the northern and southern phase is zero. So this gives not, no contributions. So we have only pressure force that makes sense in the x direction the pressure force that is in the x direction will influence the x velocity. So then we have taken care of that, and then we have to take care of that, and then we do that by taking rho fx and the volume in the center uh, cell p. So, and the v here that is the volume. So that is the volume of the cell uh, p. So that is then our discretization by the finite volume method of the x-momentum equation. So then we have to do the discretization. We have already done it for the, um, for the diffusive fluxes. We have used the central finite volume method there. And the nice thing is, and that is the, the beautiful thing with the staggered width, the pressure forces are given us for free by the staggered bridge, bridge approach. Because we have the pressure here exactly where we need it. Here we need it at the eastern phase and we have it. Here we need it at the western phase and we have it. So nothing, we have nothing um, else to do but just to take it. The only thing that remains is the discretization of the velocity components at the faces, where we can use uh, our favorite method to discretize convective fluxes. 
and we discussed in the previous section on convection diffusion equation the central fi finite volume method and the upward finite volume method. And that we can also do here. You can also use uh, other methods, quick or TVD methods or whatever you like, but we shall focus here on these uh, two uh, methods. The center, the center, uh, the central and the upwind finite volume methods. So using then the finite volume method for the convective fluxes. For example, let us just say the central or the upwind method. We can express uh, the equation seven, and we are then using that the T, as we have seen here in this um, sketch, is corresponding to the indices I capital J, and then we get uh, an equation that is then reminding us of what we have discussed uh, previously and uh, I just give the, the result we can come back to that uh, uh, tomorrow but what we get in the end will be an equation of this kind uij star and then we have here the sum of the neighboring coefficients and we have the unknowns in our case the u star at the neighboring um, cells plus the uniform part of the source term and what is the uniform part of the source term in our case it is you see it here the pressure force and the volume force <coughs> so that will be a part of the of the of the uniform part of the of the source term and of the convection and diffusion they will be taken care of by, by these coefficients so we'll discuss that in more detail tomorrow. So then you can see what, why we have been doing what we have done before. First discussing diffusion, then convection diffusion, and here we are using it. And the new thing that we learned today was the staggered grid, which is giving us beautifully the values where we need them. Okay, so then we'll look at that in more detail tomorrow.